Hello, this is David. I'm with Santan Solar. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about our um, EP Ever MPPT solar charge controllers. Uh, this is just one of the models that we have. And uh, a question that we get a lot is that, uh, you know, making adjustments with just the two buttons, how do you make changes to like uh, your battery parameters and, um, you know, the cycle, the information, people were a little bit, uh, you don't get a lot of data through that. I'll show you on, 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 a, on a screen of another model I have hooked up here for demonstration. But uh, typically with these models, you can enhance this a little bit better, and that's by getting what they call an MT50 remote display. And that really helps with more detailed information because it's basically a monitor to see what more information you can get from this. And it does have some controls over your battery parameters and battery types. So you'll be able to make adjustments for that because sometimes you might hook it to like a lithium battery, a gel, flooded, a sealed, or AGM. So, you know, there's a variety of things you can make for that. Uh, otherwise, it's a really good monitor. It gives you a lot more information. And plus, if this has to be like installed in a little bit uh, place where you really can't get to it very well, namely because it's, it's under a shelf or it's in a tight area, the remote monitor really does help. There's other options too, which we'll discuss in another video. And that's basically where you can go and use through the communication ports where they hook up to. There's a Bluetooth dongle that you can use, so you can use your phone. Uh, to do that and also the same connection that goes to a computer. Uh, what this is the MT50 remote display. It's made for from EP Ever and uh, it's a really good monitor system uh, compared to that small screen you get on your uh, actual charge controllers. As I said in, uh, previously that sometimes those charge controls can be mounted in, in kind of a, a hard places to get to. They're underneath storage areas in your RV. Uh, they're in a closet somewhere. Uh, where your other stuff is in your garage and what have you and sometimes it's just not as convenient to get to the um, screen and see what see what the statuses are where this can be mounted somewhere in a more convenient and accessible place for you and you can do that. Uh, currently when you turn them on you plug them in using the assigned cable with them. This is an RJ45 type cable basically the same thing that you use on an Ethernet cable. It's, a, it's a, just a big patch cable and it will go to the unit itself. It plugs into the COM port, as I said earlier. So, you know, you'll have a, a COM port on the bottom of your, of your unit here, uh, right, right down here. This is where it will plug into. When you turn it on, it's going to give you just the default display right here. I apologize, I don't have any panels hooked up to it. If it was a panel, it wouldn't be this little moon. In fact, this would be representative of what would be happening at night if you didn't have any panels up or anything that's reading. Here you have panels aren't reading right now, but you would, definitely, you would definitely have what the voltage were and what their amperages are putting out. Uh, you would have little chevrons moving over here to the battery, which my battery is, I'm using a 12 volt battery, 12 volt battery system. It's a 12.7 12 is what it's reading right now. There's no amps because I don't have any loads put on it at this point. And this is of course your load. So if I had something attached to the charge controller for load, or uh, I was depleting my battery out because I had something hooked to my battery that I was uh, discharging from like an inverter or what have you, this could show some of that load. This is a pretty intuitive one. I, I like it because it has the six buttons in the bottom here, your escape button, your directional buttons, and then you have your OK, which acts like the enter button on the controller itself. To get back out of this, you can go to the main menu by hitting escape. And then you'll have all your menus here. And in the manual that it will tell you uh, what these all describe as. This is your monitoring one, the one we were just on. Uh, we go down further, you can have your device info, OK? You just hit that and you can see what it's rated for. Now, if people are going to get confused with this, with this number, because they're going to say, oh, wait, I have a, I'm using only a 12 volt battery bank. The charge controller I'm attached to, right now I have one of the uh, EP Ever 150 60 amp, as you can tell, 60 amp charge controllers. And it's rated to go from 12, 24, 36, or 48. That means this charge controller can go up to 48 volts. Right now it is RAID, it's charge uh, current and other currents that are coming out through discharge and charge currents are 60 amps. And that's the rating of the actual charge controller. Escape, go back. That would be the device information that's attached to it. Remember, it's regarding your uh, charge controller. Go down to test operation. If you have some loads on it and you want to uh, test uh, how these loads are, it'll send a little signal out there and it will go through a little routine to make sure that all the connections are working just fine. Uh, this is the important one here, the control parameters. This is the one that gives you your priority, your battery priority. This is the one that you're going to probably use the most. Right now, it is auto set. It's to a sealed battery. I have an AGM battery. 
That's only about 100 amp hours that's on it. Right now, I use the default uh, temp uh, compensation coefficients, which is the standard. That's a pretty standard uh, setting for it. I have it set for the rated voltage of my battery. It's set to auto. Now, you can change that. Basically, uh, that's going to ask for that. We won't need that right now. Um, you can go down to, you can raise and lower your coefficients if you want. Side arrows to go to the next entry, which is as auto. Using up and down arrows, I can set it for uh, 48 volt, 36, 24, or 12 volt. I'm on 12 volt right now. Or I set it to auto. It'll automatically detect that. Save. Save successful. There we go. Yay. Okay, so now we can move on to the next one. And as we go further down, you can get your uh, over voltage disconnect, your charge limits. Since I'm using the sealed one that's already preset in this, it'll actually populate uh, these particular parameters for you. Your over voltage and your equalization charges, boost charges you have here, uh, and your float charge, uh, your boost reconnect, and your low voltage reconnect, under voltage. Reconnect and of course your uh, under voltage warning. So when I get to actually 12, it's going to say, hey, there's something uh, you're getting low. The low voltage disconnect will be at 11.1. .1. The discharge limit I have here is at 10.6 volts. So that's, that's really low. Uh, equalization times, if you, uh, for flooded batteries as well, you want to do equalization, you can do that as well. It's set for that. Now we're back to the main screen for our battery priorities. And that's pretty much how you do that. Now, uh, I don't believe you can, you can make your, your uh, settings for this if you wanted to. It's going to be, uh, see, it won't let me, you can't make changes to the presets. If you want to make specific changes, uh, what you will do is you will have to go into the main menu like this, hit OK. And then you want to go ahead and go to User, hit OK, Save. Then you can manually make the adjustments that you want to this. As you can see, now I hit OK. I can now make changes to this. If I want to change these parameters, I can do that. I can make it higher or lower. I could go, you know, to 15 volt or you know higher if I needed to go. The volt discharge rates and stuff like that. I can do that as well, and it will continue on. So if it makes a parameter error, it knows that it's some sort. Of, it's out of the value, and it will restore it back to the one that it was set for originally. So it went back to the 16 volts. Here I go. Um, I got my charge limits. I can change those as well. You can see, just scroll through that. Uh, all these control settings, you can do that, especially if you have lithium batteries. You can do this when there's lithium batteries because sometimes the units that you have will already have a lithium uh, setting for it, and it'll tell you that. Uh, if there are those that do not have it, like this is an older model, so you notice it didn't have any lithium settings for that. Uh, we can go back and check, but uh, usually the older ones do, don't have the lithium parameters set to it. Um, using your manual for your lithium battery, you can make these adjustments however you wish. Okay, let's see. Let's go back in there. Let's see here. Flooded, gel, sealed, and user. So this is an older model, so it didn't have the lithium. Otherwise, it would say like Li or something like that inside. And then you, you adjust your uh, battery amp hours. Now, I'm using a sealed battery. I'll go back to sealed. Hit OK. Yeah, OK. Now, my sealed battery is only 100 amp hour. So if I want to do that, I can make a change to that. And I go down one. So it's a 100 amp hour battery. I hit OK. Save. There we go. So you can make those changes here because I only have the one battery and it's only at the 100 amp hour. If you had a series of batteries or you had some parallel batteries, you had a, a you know 212 in parallel, it's going to be like a 200 amp hour. You would change that 200 amp hour. Okay. Then you have some other controllers that you, the other control parameters you have. Your load set, uh, this one, I really don't use it that much because, you know, usually it's uh, for a manual control and your loads and what have you. If you're going to be turning the lights on, off, um, for different uh, controls that you have, uh, mostly for the smaller units that I just sort of showed you earlier, they have an output for, for loads that you can use on this as well. The bigger unit, the one I'm using right now, they do have outputs for, for DC loads, but they usually have to use them on those little green uh, inserts that are in most of these models, the bigger ones, that is. 
and those will be for like relays and you know other types of 12 volt devices but it doesn't really apply to this as much so you won't have to worry about that your device parameters this one here is just showing you what the ID is of the device parameters. Just showing you, your, you can make changes to your backlight. I have it set for 90 seconds. That's a minute and a half. So it takes a minute and a half before the screen goes out. And this is, of course, the not correct data. I haven't set the data up, so that's totally wrong. Anyhow, uh, we got that. Now, you can always set your password. So if you want to be the one into this, the password of this is the default uh, password. It's just a bunch of zeros. It's all zeros. So we won't have to worry about that. Uh, the nice thing about this is that if you do a setup and you make changes, you change your batteries, you change the type of voltage, say you have one of those units that can do 12, 24, 36, or 48 like I have right now hooked up to this, and instead of the 12 volt battery set, I want to use something else, and I want to make all my changes, but I don't remember what they were, and I said, well, let me just wipe it out and start fresh. I can use the factory reset. When you set the factory reset, It'll tell you to do that, and it'll put the parameters that were in your charge controller that it has in its software, it'll put it back to default. And that's what this will do. This will put you back into default. Yeah, some errors that showed up. You have some error information. We didn't have any errors show up. Uh, and then, of course, the meter itself, the parameters of the meter. We know it's the type in MT50. It's got the version number of it. How many pages that you can go through, you can do that, how fast it takes. Your backlighting on this particular one will match the same as the charge controller. As you can see, it's 90 seconds. And that means this will stay on for about 90 seconds. Usually when you change the backlight and in any, any situation, it'll, it'll reflect on this as well. We'll go from there. You're back to your monitoring if you just hit OK. And there you go. Now this, of course, will also tell you, as we said earlier, it'll give you the date you started, your time that you started. Of course, you want to, you can check your dates. You get your day, month of chargers, energy consumption from the day, month, and total. So I haven't really had it on for very long. Uh, so you won't see that. My voltage is, of course, it's going to register what my battery is. So I'm using a 12-volt battery. And right now the voltage is at 12.7. Uh, I don't have anything running from it, so there's going to be no current. I have no panels going in. I don't have it drawing out any power, so we're just got the battery attached. Uh, the PV, if I had PVs attached, you would see the voltage coming in, the current that it's making, and of course the, the power consumption in watts is what it'll give you. Unfortunately, I don't have any panels hooked to it. It's probably show that in another video to show you that uh, what the parameters are. It's a really good monitoring thing. If you have panels out and you want to see how they're doing, you can get that information from here. Then, of course, your, your controller's temperature, how, how hot it's getting, what have you, and what the status is on that. Here's your loads. This is going to tell you what your loads are, what your current loads, and how the loads are in watts. You can turn your manual control on or off. It's, it's off right now, so we don't, you, we don't have to make that many adjustments. We can just do that. And, of course, your status. So of course, it's going to be telling you your, your PV status, your battery status, and the little happy face there. Some people get a little confused with the happy face. Uh, happy face just tells you that it's a normal operation. The battery is normal and that it's functioning properly. You can see where my voltages are at. So I'm actually pretty good. They have like three little faces that come out with this. One's this guy. One is one where he's like looking a little confused. The, the, the sad one means that you've over, you overvolted this or you over discharged it and you'll have issues with that. And it'll actually show you that. And then if it goes too low, it'll give you an error. So of course for your loads, if you want to be turning your loads on and off, you could do that if you have one of the units that have the the load settings for it. You can just do that. Oh, let's see. There we go. So that'll turn it on. You'll notice that there's 12 volts going to the load, going out. Uh, you're telling your charge controller to turn the loads on if you want to do that. So as I said earlier, uh, this is the unit we were testing that uh, cable on with the meter on. It's, it's already hooked up down here. As you can see, it's hooked into the COM port. Um, this is the larger model. This is the one that has a cover on it. So you'll need to take the cover off and then make the attachments here, just like you would the battery and the, and the PV. This is the bigger model. This is the 60 amp model, as you saw on the meter that we were showing that. It's got the 12 volt. And I said the remote display makes it so much easier to read this. Otherwise, you have to kind of like page through your rotating menus here to find out where you want to go. And like I said, you can still make those uh, adjustments here. It's just a little more arduous to do so. Like, for instance, you're here. Uh, you press and hold, and then you got your battery type. And you can make some battery type adjustments 
um, by just going through the parameters here, use, and then you know back to you know your uh, your sealed batteries, and you hit enter to stop that. And of course, you keep going. You can make some changes. You can't do a whole lot of changes here. The the MT50 remote display monitor does a much better job in helping that. And of course, we will be discussing how to use the uh, other devices that there are for here. Unfortunately, we do not have the Wi-Fi dongle, but we do have the, the uh, Bluetooth dongle here. And this is also connects using the same cables, the same type of port. You hook it to your communication port. And of course, you'll be powered on and you just link into it and then you'll use your phone. And uh, we'll get into that one at, at a later date. And I'll show you how that works using your the app on your phone. It's really convenient, very little wiring. You can actually store this away someplace else and you can use your phone to monitor your system from any place uh, nearby your, your unit. Like if you're in the kitchen, you're in your RV, you're outside, you want to check on it, you want to take a look at how your panels are doing, how they're producing, you can use your uh, app on your phone for that. So this is a very convenient method as well. Again, uh, thanks for watching this video. Just like you to know that uh, our EP Evers that we have in stock are a great little device. We do have quite a variety of these. We have from 20 amps all the way up to 100. I think we have a 200 amp one. Not sure about that one. But we do have these. Uh, these are great charge controllers. They're budget friendly. They, they work well. And uh, they have better ways of looking at the screens, as you said. Because sometimes when uh, you get these, and these are kind of tucked away someplace, and you don't have the, the ease of monitoring your system. They do have a way of doing that. And uh, as I discussed earlier, in conclusion to our little video, that the MT50 makes it so much easier for monitoring that as well. Uh, it's very convenient because it can be away from your unit. Um, all you have to do is plug it in and it automatically does everything. You don't have to make any adjustments or turn it on. It'll power, it's powered by the unit itself. So it'll just come up and then you just got to go through your uh, menus to find out how, how your system is functioning, your PV, your battery, your loads. Also, you can make adjustments when you want to change your batteries, add batteries, increase the battery voltage, or say you're going back down to a 12, 12 volt system, or a 24 volt system, this is a great way to do it. It's auto detecting, so it can do that. But if you have uh, specific needs for your battery, you can go ahead and make those adjustments with these as well. They're very convenient. They don't cost a lot to get these. Whenever you pick up one of these MPPT EP Evers, no matter what size you get, I always recommend to pick up one of these MT50 displays. It's a low cost way to expand your ability to monitor your system. Makes it a lot more convenient. It comes with all the hardware you need. You can mount this on a wall. It comes with about at least six feet worth of cable. So you can put it six feet away around the corner or someplace like that, especially if you have an RV or where your stuff is at. You need to just to access it a little bit better. Uh, this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, another way to do that is, of course, what we discussed earlier, is also another method is to use the Bluetooth dongle. It connects the same way using the same cable into the same port. And uh, you just have to download the app called the uh, EP Ever Pair. The older models that they had for this were of the blue color. Um, they used a different app. Uh, it's older now, so they don't support that anymore. So, if you, But if you have one of those, you can still use those on, on the EP Ever Tracer uh, charge controllers. Uh, this is a really great unit too to have. You just use your phone as an app. It does the same parameters. You can make the changes just as easily as if you did with the um, MT50. It's just that you have to have this on, you have to pair with it, and you have to use an app but it makes it so much easier. You could be sitting on your couch and you say, oh, okay, um, how's my uh, batteries being charged up? Are they full? Can I start shutting it down? What kind of things can I run? I like to take a look and see what parameters and what you're putting out. And you can just do that all on your phone. It's a really nice little unit to have. If you want to go ahead with this route, you can go ahead with this. this again, makes it so much easier to monitor your system. Well, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for joining us here at Santan Solar. Uh, I hope it was a, a help to you guys. And if you have any further questions, feel free to give us a call or go online for our products here at uh, www.santansolar.com and uh, we'll be glad to help you with any kind of stuff that you need. Uh, I'm David, I'm with the Tech Support Department and uh, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks again.